Hey guys, what's up? It is Siberian Husky Fan, and I will be showing you how to clean a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, so we will get into that right now. <clears throat> what you're going to want first, sorry about my voice, I've kind of been going through allergies right now. What you're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver. You cannot get this in any stores. You are going to have to get this online. You are going to need Q-tips, alcohol, Mr. Clean Magic eraser, and if you have the means, a uh, cartridge cleaning kit. I have one, but I just didn't feel like getting it out at the moment. So, first things first, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to unscrew the first six screws that are in your Game Boy Pocket. And four of them can be seen. Two of them are hidden in the cartridge slot. So you want to remove the uh, batteries for that. And you're going to need your tri-wing screwdriver to remove these. Once you have all of the screws out, you can now take off the back of your system here. And you will reveal the motherboard. I'm going to move these aside here. And you are going to want to remove the three screws in the back with a Phillips head screwdriver as well as you're going to want to take off the power switch because you could easily lose this and keep this with your stuff you want to clean and you're going to want to pull up the tabs here to take out the ribbon cable and there we go me trying to do this one-handed is not fun so once you take out the three screws you can either pull the ribbon cable carefully or you can pull it out with one or two hands once you pull the tabs up. There we go. All right, then just simply pull up on your motherboard. There it is. And here are the screen and the buttons. So what you can do from here is you can take out the buttons and clean them because I'm pretty sure this system has never been cleaned before. Yeah, that's dirty. So because this is a 20 year old system now, you may, ew, holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. That was the wow factor. There's the A and B buttons. Uh, you could pretty much put these in the same way that you took them out. Ew, that's even, did someone, I think someone spilled soda. I think someone spilled soda doesn't surprise me and ooh wow that's uh, really nice and <laughs> so I'm going to show you in a second how you can take off the LCD screen without killing it okay so next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the ice cube tray method to take off your LCD screen without harming the screen as well as harming the plastic now you could harm it if you use too much force and pressure, but as long as you don't use too much, you should be fine. So A, you're going to want to be careful because the Game Boy Pocket is the only Game Boy where they have the ribbon cable exposed like this. So you're going to want to be careful in general with this middle area here. So just, it'll make terrible noises, sounding like death, but this is the glue coming undone from the uh, screen and voila. Now this is the thinnest screen I have ever held just looking at it and it took a lot of force just to get that off but as you can see the LCD screen is perfectly fine and still in one piece. And I will show you here the whole front half of the system. Now what you could do from here is you could take off this plastic vinyl part and you could replace the screen from here. 
but I'm not going to do that because this is actually in decent shape. So I'm just going to put this in with the uh, rest of the stuff to clean and we will go to the sink and get everything ready. Okay, so what you're going to want to do from here, sorry if you hear someone in the background, uh, is you're going to want to put your pieces into the hot water, very hot water. And whatever soap you prefer to use, Dawn dish soap is probably the best because it pretty much gets anything. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put them in the soapy water. And for once I'm actually cleaning a battery cover <laughs> in one of my videos at least. And what you're going to want to do from here is you're going to want to let them sit for about 10-15 minutes. Um, what you're going to want to do once they're all done is you're going to use a new toothbrush for your systems only and scrub whatever you can with it. So what you're going to want to do while your stuff is sitting in the water is you're going to want to clean like the little contacts where the A, B, Start, Select, and D-pad are as well as your speaker. So what you'll want to do is just lightly go over it. You don't want to douse it in too much alcohol. You just want to do, you know, enough. So the speaker is pretty much mostly clean now. And here is the gunk I got off the speaker. So this is why it's a good idea to clean your speaker because you don't want that much stuff sitting on your system. But that's all you really need to do while you're waiting for your stuff to soak. But you just want to make sure everything looks okay. You could use an air duster if it's really dusty in here. What you're going to want to do once they're all rinsed off and sat and have been brushed is you're going to want to let this sit for quite a few hours. You don't want any of the, these pieces to be mixed with the uh, internals or the hardware of the system because you could just potentially just screw up your system. So you're going to want to let all these pieces sit for a few hours and dry before you assemble. Okay, so once everything is dried and everything is perfectly clean now, you can now place everything that you want back into the correct areas so I'm starting with the buttons first and there's that and this now has a specific spot it seems like the DMG is where you can only get away with sw swapping the uh, silicone rubber pieces this will save for whenever we put in the motherboard. Next we are just going to nicely place in the screen. Make sure it's in there. There we go. And then once that's all in there, now we can place the motherboard nicely back on and making sure that the ribbon cable is not being sat on by the system. There we go. So next what you're going to want to do is put your three Phillips head screws back in and you're also going to want to place your ribbon cable back in. So once you get your three screws back in as well as your ribbon cable, you're also going to want to put in your power switch. And then you will want to place over your bottom half of the system. There we go. Once that's in place, you are going to want to put in your six tri-wing screws back into their places. Next thing you're going to want to do, if you really want to, or if you need to, use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and go over any uh, chips or anything that's light scratches and go over it with this. Now, I will warn you, the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is like sandpaper, so if you go over any logos or anything, the A and B symbols here, start select, yeah, you will get rid of those, because this thing is really pretty much magic. So, I'm not going to do that, because this system actually isn't too bad, and put in a game, and hope that it works. And we sure will hope. And there it is. So, I hope you all enjoyed the cleaning of a Game Boy Pocket. See you guys!